currently headed out to a saloon out in the middle of Good Springs and it's pretty much one of the only things in Good Springs anymore. But it's the place where Clark Gable spent a very intense weekend. When his wife Carol Lombard was involved in a plane crash in 1942 after selling war bonds, he rushed out here via this road to Good Springs where they had set up the resource center for the search efforts looking for her body. And Clark Gable would spend three days holed up drinking here, waiting to find out if Carol had survived. Well gang, here we are. One of my bucket list vlogs, one that I've always wanted to do since I started doing this and one of the places I've wanted to visit most in my life. A place that changed Clark Gable's life and a place that his entire soul changed. The Pioneer Saloon here in Good Springs, Nevada. You see, Good Springs used to be kind of a bustling city in the early 1900s, and it was all because there was a big mining operation out here, and then um, after World War I, it kind of died out, and they had a resurgence in World War II, and then it died out again, and pretty much the whole place is gone. Now there's only about 200 residents in this whole little ghost town, and there actually used to be a... Uh, kind of a motel over here and that's where Clark Gable stayed when he was here but what happened was right over the shoulder of the Pioneer Saloon you can see the mountain ranges that's Mount Pelosi or Mount Potosi and Carol Lombard was off in Indiana her home state selling war bonds for World War II and Clark Gable was back in Los Angeles making a movie. She didn't really like to be gone very long so she had went to do this fundraiser in Indiana and uh, after the fundraiser she actually had raised two million dollars they were supposed to take a train back but she decided that she wanted to fly and there weren't really enough um, seats on this military uh, plane that was going to be coming back this way so she actually uh, talked some people into flipping a coin um, because her mother didn't like to fly and she had her press agent who was also one of Clark's best friends um, Winkler and so they didn't both want to fly but Carol wanted to get back quick so she, they flipped a coin she won the coin toss so they all had to fly and so they flew from Indiana to Vegas and then switched planes in Vegas and uh, unfortunately, uh, because they had blacked out some of the beacons in the area, um, the pilot got lost and blew off course by a few miles and ended up crashing into the twin mountain ranges behind the Pioneer Saloon. So they notified Clark Gable that that had happened and some reports say that he immediately drove out here. Some say that they flew him to Vegas and then they drove him up this road out here and he waited here for three days to, as search parties were up in that mountain range looking to see if anyone had survived and to go through the wreckage. Now inside here they actually have a tribute and a memorial to Clark and Carol's love and we're going to go in and see it but they also have a few cigar burn holes at the bar where supposedly Clark Gable had um, been getting drunk for those three days and this is also where the search effort was headed up so they were all here and he would uh, just get drunk and rest his cigar on that bar. Now there's a lot of other history to this place as well even beyond that because um, when it was originally founded this was a pretty popular saloon and somebody had cheated at a poker game here and was shot and they actually have some uh, a bullet hole on the side of the building from that as well as the coroner's report. Now here you can actually see this saloon was established in 1913 and uh, So Breck and I are actually going to go in and uh, we're going to have a bite to eat here and we're going to check out the memorial to Clark and Carol. 
Now they've actually used the Pioneer Saloon for quite a few movies, commercials, TV shows, and things like that. And uh, two of the notable ones that I know it from, uh, one of them is the old Cheech and Chong movie, Things Are Tough All Over. And then um, if you own the DVD, in the deleted scenes of Fear and Loathing Las Vegas, there is a scene of Johnny Depp walking through here. All right, we're gonna go on in, see if we can't find that bullet hole and see Clark's cigar burns. Look at that, the whole wall. This whole wall is, is to them both. And this is a list of all the passengers on the flight. There are actually 22 passengers on that flight that crashed. Now after Carol died, Clark actually enlisted in the, uh, in the Air Force and was a bomber and then eventually made, made uh, war videos for the military. They used to call each other Ma and Pa. God, there's so much stuff. One of the cool things is that this entire wall is all Clark and Carol. And then this wall over here is all the other things that have filmed here. And then this wall is actually the history of the, uh, the saloon itself. Now right there it actually says that uh, there was a scant few hundred yards between the safety and the flaming death on the mountainside. Ah, oh, so sad. No survivors. Now there was a movie, the very last movie that Carol made was in post-production, and they actually ended up editing the movie because there's a part where Carol says, what's, what's the worst that can happen in a plane? Or something to that effect. And because she died in the plane, they were, they thought it was in poor taste to keep that in. Now that right there is actually a photo of the wreckage. And then this right here is actually a piece of the wreckage of the plane. And they said that when they found Carol's body and they could confirm that she was passed, when they came back here and told Clark, they said that he tore out of here and it took four men to subdue him and stop him. He wanted to race up the mountain to be with her. And they said that that was a big part of the reason why he joined the Air Force. Um, they said, some people said that Carol had always um, wanted him to join the Air Force or join the military since World War II broke out. But a lot of people say that after she passed, before he joined the military, he was racing up and down Sunset Boulevard on his motorcycle. And a lot of his friends said he had a death wish. So when he joined the military, they said that was part of the death wish. He would sign up for every bombing mission that they could put him on until finally the military was afraid that he would die. So they requested him to be part of the group that would make um, educational films or uplifting films for the military to enlist other men. Of course, I've been to uh, been to Carol's grave before, it's in Forest Lawn, but uh, even though Clark was married five times, Carol was the love of his life, and he wanted to be buried next to her when he passed, so his last wife um, made sure that he was. Two years after Carol passed, President Roosevelt was so moved by her contribution that he named a ship the USS Carol Lombard and Clark while serving was brought to the um, the official unveiling ceremony of it. And President Franklin Roosevelt was also so moved by Carol's contribution that he gave her the first Presidential Medal of Freedom for being the first woman to uh, be killed in the line of duty during World War II.
Now, like I said, this is all the the other things. This has been on Ghost Hunters and various other uh, commercials, movies, things like that. But uh, well, right here you can see here's the Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And then Breck was pointing out that he saw there was a uh, picture of Cheech and Chong here, right up there on top when they filmed here. And actually, in the deleted scenes for Fear and Loathing, Johnny Depp actually comes in right through here and then uh, goes around the corner and sits at the corner spot. Um, right there, it was actually the Clark Gable spot in the bar, that very first one. And there are the uh, cigar grooves right there. This is the oldest bar in Clark County, and here's a piece from uh, Weird Las Vegas. There's that picture of Cheech and Chong and Chris Angel. So apparently what they're known for here is this uh, this ghost burger with the jalapenos. I don't know if I really want a ghost burger though. Kind of cool to be uh, to be eating in here where you know that for three full days Clark Gable would have been hanging out in here. So there are many reports that this place has been haunted by Clark's ghost, Carol's ghost, the ghost of the cheating poker player who was shot here. Many, uh, many stories of people feeling that this place is haunted, but I don't necessarily feel much. Not personally. So this is the actual table where the uh, cheating card game happened, they said. They said that's where he was actually shot in the bullet holes in the, uh, the room next to us, right over on the other side of this wall. Oh wow, there's the, uh, there are the bullet holes. Whoa. Oh, look how they warm the room. Classic. And I saw online that these are the original um, foot rails down here from when it very first opened. And then right here is the seat that Clark Gable was burning the uh, cigar holes into. You can see them right there. Now in this picture you can actually see the the uh, the background of the walls. That's what the the walls really look like with those kind of like engraved X's. They're great. See if you look at the patterns up there, you can see all the X's. Yeah, that's the room. That's the room where they made all the plans for the search party. Oh, cool. Picture on the men's room of Clark. I know this is kind of weird, but I wanted to show you the inside of the men's room because this is the bathroom that Clark Gable would have been using, obviously, and it looks pretty original to me. I know it's probably not all of your dream to see the inside of a bathroom, but if Clark Gable was using it and looking in that mirror wondering if Carol was still alive, it's worth seeing to me. And that's the outside of the memorial room. You can tell a lot of off-roading goes on out here. And you know what's weird? They say, um, a lot of people have told me before that if you hike up those mountains, uh, it takes three, four hours to get up to the spot where the crash happened, but if you make it up there, there's still some of the debris and wreckage from the flight all these years later. Now if you look straight ahead, you can see those two points off in the distance. That's actually where the plane wreckage happened. Just kind of roaming around while I wait for our food to get finished. It's pretty cool that they memorialized a lot of the history here. Right over here it even says what all uh, film and movies and everything. Chris Angel, you can see Cheech and Chong, some of the things I already mentioned. Very cool place. This is the back. Oh, cool. A time capsule. I'd love to know what's going to be discovered inside of there.
And this, that's pretty cool. True story of the green hats. This place is awesome. And look at this gate. Look what this gate says. Oh, I'd kill to have that gate. And then those are all the, uh, the brew they have on tap back there. All right, I think our food's almost ready. They used to actually have a uh, memorial plaque for Carol's crash outside and they said online in 2007 someone stole it and they've never replaced it. That one's really sad. You can see at the very top it says, fiery end to fairy tale. Oh, check this out. Here's George Carlin at the uh, Pioneer Saloon filming. That is so cool. Director Arthur Hiller. He helped Quentin Tarantino out a lot, actually, early on. All right, I just got the regular barbecue burger, but Breck got the ghost burger, so he'll, uh, he'll let us know how it is. So you remember how I showed you that stove in the other room? Civil War wood stove. All right, we are out of here. I think this is just another little cafe, this ghost town cafe. So maybe there's two sections of things that you can try out. I thought there was a little, uh, there was a little, uh, little market or something, but maybe not. Maybe that's it. Well, another bucket lister accomplished. Great day at the Pioneer Saloon. Kind of, kind of crazy to think about how many hours Clark Gable would have been sitting here thinking about the rest of his life. And of course, poor Carol. Wow. There literally isn't much here in Good Springs, so we're gonna get out of here, but we just drove past this, and it's behind barbed wire, but there's a lot of kind of old dilapidated stone cabins out here, and this was one of them. I'll try and show you a few more kind of rustic pieces of this area as we drive out of here. Oh, there's the church. Pretty tiny little church, huh? Oh, look, Coyote Ranch. Lots of ruins over here, you can tell.